Hi, I'm Rick Rines, the Senior Rabbi at Temple Sinai in Denver, Colorado. This week is Shabbat HaGadol and Shabbat Tzav. Shabbat HaGadol is the Sabbath right before Passover. And it's a time to remind us, of course, that you got to finish up your Passover cleaning, getting rid of the chametz, all the leaven products, locking up in a closet or in a room, all of those things that you can't throw away. It's also a time to prepare for the Seder. Now, we can't always have guests over right now. We're still in the COVID season, but we're arranging for the Zoom Seders, and some of our close loved ones can be over with us. But then going through the Haggadah, preparing for the Seder, preparing for this week of Passover. Now, note the word Haggadah. It comes from the Hebrew word lahagid, to tell. And the crucial part of the whole Passover experience, no, it's not the cleaning. No, it's not all of the uh, getting rid of the chametz, although those are important mitzvot. It's all about the telling, lahagid, to tell the story of our ancestors' redemption from Egyptian slavery. And also to remind the loved ones that we have now to remind each other that we all have stories of redemption. We all have stories of overcoming incredible experiences and challenges to learn from them, to be inspired by them, to empower people to realize that together as a family, as a community, that we can find a sense of a better tomorrow. Now this week's Torah portion, Tzav, doesn't seem to blend easily into that mitzvah of lahagid to tell the story of Passover. Indeed, it doesn't mention Passover at all. It's chapters 6, 7, and 8 of the book of Leviticus. And it starts off with laws about the olah, the, the whole offering that was burnt both in the morning as well as in the evening. And it was burnt whole. It was not shared. The meat was not shared by the kohanim. It was burnt whole on the altar. And then the ashes would be remaining, and the Kohanim would have to then remove the ashes and prepare it for the next day. So as we look through it, we would go, it's just all about sacrifices again, and about what the priest has to do here, and what they can wear, and what they can't wear, and uh, what do you do with the, this sacrifice or that. And so it's hard for us in the modern era, some 2,000 years after the destruction of the temple, in which we had the cessation of the sacrifices, you think, well, how does this relate to me in any way? And certainly, how does it relate to me with Passover? And so I wanted to get back to the, the removal of the ashes. In Hebrew, it's deshen, deshen or ashes. And there was a competition even among the Kohanim to be privileged to be among those who would remove those ashes, harim et hadeshen. They would remove those ashes to a sacred place. And it's not trash removal, but rather these were ashes of the olah, of, this, of the sacrifice. These were offerings to God. Now we have avodah shebalev, the offering of our heart. And the, and our ancestors in the ancient world, they would actually bring offerings that would be consumed by fire on this altar. And the remnant of it, the ashes of it, were not just to be tossed away as trash, but they were understood to be a part of that holiness as well. And so the Kohanim would take those ashes and they would remove it to a very special place. And I thought that metaphor rings perfectly for us today, because here in Colorado, we are still really reeling from the loss, the murder of 10 innocent people at a King Supers in Boulder, Colorado. And we're trying to make sense of it. And we can't make sense of it. Another senseless murder, innocent people who went to the grocery store just to get food, other young people who were working at that store serving others, and a police officer who every day risked his life for us, who raced in to try to save lives and had his life taken away, a father of seven, 10 innocent people taken away. And we're thinking there's no sense there. There's no lesson there. In Colorado, we're spinning. In Atlanta, they're spinning as well. Eight murdered just the week before, six of whom were Asian. And there's the thought that maybe they were targeted as a, as a racist act. There's too much violence in this world right now. And many of us can feel that sense of violence around us and they get a sense of hopelessness and the metaphor of the holiness of ashes, I want us to think about. Because what the Kohanim did, what our ancestors did, they said, from those ashes, the remnant of 
dreams, of prayers, of offerings that did not reach fruition. Our prayers of the past year, our hopes over the last year, our plans over the last year, they, they became ashes. Weddings either canceled or moved to different dates. B'nai Mitzvah, Bar Bar Mitzvah boys and girls who worked so hard to have their services all changed. Our programs, our uh, gatherings for the community to celebrate our lives together all in ashes. But just because they became ashes doesn't mean they aren't holy. Those dreams and those hopes that we had are still there. Those ashes contain the seeds of tomorrow's hopes and dreams. And so what we need to do in this Passover as we begin to clean our homes and prepare the Hagid to tell the story of our people, take note of those ashes, of those losses that we've had in the year behind us and say, we're going to treasure them and build upon them and give fresh soil for those seeds to grow. We're gonna open up our door on Passover to Elijah. This week's Torah portion is Tzav. The Hathara portion is the special Torah portion for Shabbat Hagadol. That great Sabbath is from the prophet Malachi. And in the third chapter, at the very conclusion, he says, Elijah will come to reconcile children with parents and parents with children. Recognizing that, yes, sometimes there's divisions in the generations. Sometimes we talk past one another using different terms and imaginations. But Malachi said, one day there will be a time when the generations will be on the same page, when people of different faiths and races of cultures will all come together and say, there's a commonality of our humanity. And that will be the time in which Elijah will usher in an era of peace, reconciling parents and children, reconciling people of different backgrounds and saying it's time to turn those spears into pruning hooks and those swords into plowshares. And may we have peace in our world. May you have peace in your family, in your community, a renewal of hope. And may this Shabbat be one of peace and rest and this Passover be one that ushers in a new era. Shabbat Shalom and Chag Pesach Sameach.